hello beautiful today I'm going to be doing the introduction to Genesis in my background studies workbook of the Old Testament so let's get right into it the supplies I will be using besides my unfolding truth background studies workbook I'm going to use this black multi-liner from Mr. Penn I love Mr. Penn I've got some random um, washi tapes and post-it notes here. I like to add texture and a little bit of different variety to it because I feel like it's more fun to go back and look at. To super simplify this, I have pulled out my rose book of Bible charts, maps, and timelines. This is a wealth of information, okay? So I have pulled this out. I've got this page right here that shows us the Old Testament books, and it's going to give us a really basic outline, okay? I also have a couple of my uh, study Bibles handy in case we need them, okay? So very first of all, it says, who was the human author, and what do you know about him, all right? Well, this tells us it's Moses, all right? So we are going to write out Moses here. Um, let's see, I feel like I should add some color to it. I think I'm gonna grab, these might bleed through really bad. Let me not grab those. Let me grab, I'm gonna grab a mild liner with the brush tip pen. And I am going to come over here and I'm gonna write a little, little purdy there, a little purdy. And then I'm gonna write Moses on this, okay? M. L M E S. Now, at this point, oh my goodness, I totally spelled that wrong. M O M. You guys are like, what, Nikki? Mamas. Mamas. <laughs> oh, me, oh my. That's why I pulled out washi tape. See this? Boop. Washi tape. Nobody will know. Washi tape, there we go. Okay, we'll try again, let me try that again. Let me try that again. Let's, okay, see I have mom on my mind. I have mom on my mind. So maybe I don't wanna use that, I don't know. Let's see, maybe I need a thicker black marker. I didn't say this video was gonna be organized or fancy, okay? I'm just keeping it real here today. It's probably gonna be a little bit long, but I'm just gonna keep it real here today. I think I do want a color. Let's see. We'll do it on this. I feel like I need a thicker tip pen to write this because this one's really fine. So let me see what I've got up here. I love my Dollar Tree ultra fine pens. So let me use this one. M O S E S. There, I'm an artist, okay? So I am creative, I should say. And so I create art sometimes when I have time in my spare time, which I don't have anymore. And I learned in being an artist that there's always a way to fix a mistake. So don't panic if you mess up in your book. There's always a way to fix a mistake. So I'm going to tape this little guy right here. I think I really want a glue stick. Let me go find a glue stick. Hold on. Hold that thought. Ooh, yay. I never have one handy, but hey, guess what? Today, I do. So this is just a Dollar Tree plain old glue stick. What I'm doing here by doing this is I'm going to remember the author of Genesis better because I'm, I've am i got my hands on him, right? Okay, so there is Moses. If you're not creative and you don't care to be, just write his name in this box. You don't have to be creative in this. It's optional. It's just for me, it's kind of a, a process of helping me remember it better. I like to add different textures and colors. It helps me remember it better and it's more fun to go back and look at. What do I know about Mr. Moses? So let me grab another study Bible and let's see what we can find. I'm just going to randomly grab one here. This is my ESV study Bible. I have no idea if I'm going to find information on Moses in this, but I'm going to go to the back and I'm going to look for Moses. 
You probably need a Bible dictionary for this. That's probably the best idea. Here's Moses. It tells you where he's mentioned. So God said to Moses, I am who I am. She named him Moses because. So it says Exodus 2.10. So let's go to Exodus 2.10 and find out a little bit about little Moses. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Exodus 2. 10. This is going to be a long video. Hang in there. I promise you, you're going to learn though. Ha, don't mind me ripping my Bible pages. It's okay. 2.10. Okay. 2.10. It says, when the child grew older, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter. Oh, okay. Nope. We want to back up, back up, back up. The birth of Moses. Now a man from the house of Levi went and took as his wife a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him three months. When she could hide him no longer, she took him, took, took for him a basket made of bulrushes and daubed it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds by the riverbank. And his sister stood at a distance to know what would be done to him. Now the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her young woman walked beside the river. Okay, so what we're learning here is that Moses was um, a Levite. All right, so Moses was a Levite. Let me get myself at a good angle here. Moses was a Levite. That means that he came from the tribe of Levi. Levite. Born, and I just know this, okay? So born during the Israelites. Time in Egypt. His mother cleverly saved him as a baby. Now I ran out of room and I wanted to write more. Raised by Pharaoh's daughter became a leader to the Israelites. Good enough. Not perfect, but good enough. I should have maybe thought that out better before I actually wrote it down, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, okay? I am going to grab a little bit of washi here, just whatever one pops up. No big deal. Let me get rid of that little piece. And I'm going to, I know this is kind of wild, but it's okay. Whoops. This is kind of wild, but it's okay. There we go. Okay. And then the reason why I did that is because I felt like I needed some right here because I kind of had this blank space and it was bothering me. Oh, don't mind me. My wall is falling down. It's okay. No big deal. Um, okay. Who was the original audience and what do you know about them? Okay. So the original audience would be the Israelites. So let's see about putting this here. Maybe we can do it this way. Some of this requires a bit of research, but it's worth it. Some of this I just know. And if you don't know, that's okay. Just take your time and research it. The Israelites. So I'm going to take a little piece here and do this to cover that up. And I'm going to say, I'll use my thicker marker here, God's people Comma, the Israelites. Um, okay. Let's see. What is the purpose of the book and what type of writing is it? Okay, so the purpose of the book, it doesn't say in that little outline thing. Okay, so let's look at this one. This is going to be my Believer's Bible Commentary. And I've pulled out Genesis. 
We've got, um, let's see, information about Moses, not really, background and themes. Uh, da, 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 da. That's not really telling me much, is it? No. This is interesting, though. Through his servant Moses, the Holy Spirit traces the beginnings of man, woman, marriage, the home, sin. Okay, yeah, there it is. That's good. Let's write that down. Um, through his servant Moses, so let's write through God's servant Moses, comma, the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit guided Moses because this was not written way back when God created the earth and everything in it. Through God's servant Moses, the Holy Spirit, it's okay to write exactly what's in your book too because you're not selling this. This is for you. Traces the beginnings of man. Traces the beginnings of man. Woman, marriage, so it's giving you the things that it's, that it's going over, okay? The home, sin, sacrifices, oh wow, this has a whole list, cities, what else does it say? Trade, agriculture, music. So trade, agriculture, music. Look at all that we are going to learn in the book of Genesis. Worship languages. Worship, comma, languages. You can buy this book on Amazon. Languages. I will put a link in the description box. It really is a great idea to go through and learn about these books. They're placed in the order that they are in the Bible. It will help you learn the order of the Bible and it will help you know more about each author, more about the audience. It will just give you a lot of great knowledge. And the races and nations of the world. Okay, all this in the first 11 chapters, okay? Um, how do I wanna say that? Do, 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 do. I don't really know, I don't really know. Um, from 12 to 50, we see the beginnings of Israel, God's test tube nation, to be a spiritual microcosome of all the peoples of the world, the lives of the patriarchs, okay? So it also, let's see, where was the author at the time of writing? Who are the key people and places? So let's go over here to the key people and places then. And let's put in, whoops, let me make sure you can see. I moved my book, didn't I? Who are the key people or key places, okay? So we've got God's people, the Israelites, Israel, um, we've got Egypt, wandering in the desert, and um, they don't make it to the promised land yet. So I guess I didn't really want a comma there. Egypt and wandering in the desert. Let's do that. So we're going to, how are we going to fix this? Well, we're just going to grab a little piece of washi tape and we're just going to fix it. We're going to cover it up like that, like so. And it's all right. We'll figure out something to do with it. What could we do with it? Let's see. What's this one say? That, we don't want that one. We don't want that one. Why did I even pull those out? I have no idea. I have no idea. Um, let's use a piece of this because it'll pull this color together. Uh, 
Okay, what did I do with my scissors, ladies? Did I have scissors? Not yet, did I? And guess what? Ha! Nikki knows where they are. I hope I'm talking loud enough for you. I get away from my microphone, don't I? And then I don't talk loud enough. Okay. Okay, we're going to just put this here. Just to make it look like I intentionally put the washi tape there. Okay, and then let's see, what else? Egypt and wandering in the desert. And then we've got, um, let's see, background and themes. I'm looking through the Believer's Bible commentary. Uh, others, do, do, do. Genesis is history. So what are the main messages and themes? What's the purpose? So let's say, okay, what do you, who, who is the original audience and what do you know about them? God's people, the Israelites. So we're going to come back to that. We know that this is a story of history, okay? Um, let's put, let's see, how do I want to do this? Let's do this. We're going to just get creative here. We're going to utilize this space the best that we can. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna cut this off. Put this right here. This is a little obnoxious, isn't it? But that's okay. Genesis is the first book of the law. It is a story of history. The first book of the law, a history book of beginnings. I know I already kind of wrote that. And God's chosen people. Okay, who are the key people and places? Some more key people. We're going to have Adam. And we're going to have Eve. And we're going to have um, do, 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 do. Cain, Abel, Seth, and at least one sister. We don't know how many sisters they had. Adam and Eve could have had hundreds of kids. Who knows? Sister. We know there was a sister somewhere. Cain. So back then, they could... Um, have had babies within their family line. They, they were pure. These people were pure. They, they were cursed. God cursed them. But their gene pool would have been much more pure than ours is today. So the odds of them having a baby with their sister was very likely, right? It had to be because that these this was the first family. It's the only thing that makes sense. <clears throat> and uh, Enoch... Then we've got Abel was killed by Cain. We've got Seth. We got another Enoch. Methuselah, Lamech, Noah. Oh, wow, this goes on and on and on and on and on. Why do we have two Enochs? I don't know. Enoch? Enoch number two. <laughs> uh, oh, this is the Enoch that loved the Lord, okay. This is from Genesis 22 through 24. And then this is going to go all the way down to Noah. So let's just do, 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 Noah. And eventually it's going to go to um, Shem, who's going to have Abram. Shem, who's going to have Abram. Who's going to have Isaac? Who's going to have Jacob? Okay, we're just getting the basic people here. Isaac, two A's. Isaac, who's going to have Jacob? Wow, that was a lot, wasn't it? Sorry about that. That was a lot, but here it is. Noah, Shem, Abram. This is not a direct line, okay? I'm just giving you, well, I will tell you, a direct line is Noah to Shem. 
But Shem to Abraham is not a direct line, but Abraham to Isaac, Isaac to Jacob is a direct line, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. And then Jacob has the 12 tribes of Israel, all right? So if you're totally confused, that's okay. You will learn that as you study through Genesis. But for right now, this is what you know, okay? So this is what matters. This is what matters. These basic people um, that we know, and then what are the main messages and themes? So let's see. First of all, we want to go, where was the author at the time of writing and what was the approximate time period? I'm using my little book right here. And I am going to use the time period that they wrote. Um, where was the author? Um, Sinai. S-I-N-A-I and Canaan. Canaan. Okay, and then it was 14, 46 BC to 14, 06 BC. The reason, so what are the main message? What was the purpose of the book and what type of writing is it? Okay, so that kind of goes up here with the history book, but that's okay. There, there, You aren't always going to find exactly what the prompts want, okay? But this book right here gives me uh, why, and so I'm going to write that down. Um, and this was, let's see, let's get another piece of paper so that this will stand out here. Okay, we're going to take that off. Why is to demonstrate, to demonstrate that God is sovereign and loves his creation. Oh, I like that. I like that. Okay, so that's the why of it. I'm going to cut this off. We're going to make sure we get the corners down here. Okay, so we got that. It looks like I need to glue this corner down. All right, let me make sure I didn't move my book so you guys can see what I'm doing. There we go. Okay, we've been doing this for 24 minutes, but that's okay. Um, the next thing is um, main messages and themes. So we've got a lot of the main messages and themes here. Um, we know that it's a history book. So let's just write here, Genesis is a narrative. Um, I'm actually going to write Genesis is a true story. Do, 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 do. I use this fine tip. This one's a little bit too fine tip to use in this book, I feel like. So I just stick with my Dollar Tree one. I like my Dollar Tree one. Okay, now what is next? We need to know, I'm going to go over that. I don't like the way that looks. I love Mr. Penn. They sent me a Christmas gift. It was the sweetest thing ever. They sent me a Christmas, and it wasn't even their own product, so it was like something they picked out for me, which was so stinking sweet. They sent me a whole set of beautiful um, Christian mugs, like coffee mugs. They're absolutely beautiful. I love Mr. Penn. Shop Mr. Penn, please, anytime you can. They are just awesome. Um, I don't know who the Mr. and Mr. Penn is. I work with the ladies that work in the marketing team, and I don't get paid by Mr. Penn, but I do love them. They are so kind and sweet and a small um, company. And so, yeah, shop with them anytime you can because I do love them. What are the main messages and themes? So where are we going to find this at? Let's see if I can put this book aside. We are going to get my NIV study Bible out. This is a hefty baby. And we're going to see if there are some main messages and themes in here. So we've got um, the date. Here's the theme. Genesis is a book of beginnings that introduces central themes of the Bible, such as creation and redemption. So that's important, creation and redemption, because that really is what Genesis is ultimately about. So let's write, um, let's see, I want to use one of these again, I think. 
think I want to use one of those. And actually, I'm going to cover up this thing that says other fun facts. Why not, right? I can do that. Okay, Genesis is a book of beginnings. So we already, we've wrote that down before, but that's okay. Genesis is a book of beginnings. Genesis is such an awesome book that introduces, introduces central themes. I feel like they're crucial themes. Central themes of the Bible, comma, such as creation and redemption, such as creation and redemption. Those are the most important parts of Genesis. So I love that this book gave me those two words because those are perfect, perfect, perfect words for the book of Genesis. Let's see. We'll grab a piece of this again and we will put it right there. Hold that baby down. All right. Now let's see what else this says. This is a great study Bible tool. I almost have too many guys because it gets overwhelming. Let me just tell you. Genesis speaks of beginnings. Let's see what else. The book of Genesis foundational to understanding the rest of the Bible. Its message is rich and complex. So let's say that the book of Genesis is essential. The book of Genesis is essential. in understanding the rest of the Bible. Okay, the rest of the Bible. That was important. I feel like that was really important. So I wanted to write that down. I wonder if there's anything else I want to write there. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Um, the next thing it says, it concentrates on the life of a later son, no, don't know what that all means. Literary features. Genesis is a divided into 10 main sections, each identified by the word account. Well, that's a fun fact, so that can go right down here. Genesis is, what did it say? Divided, where did I see that at? Do, do, do. Divided into 10 main sections. That is a super fun fact. Divided into 10 main sections, comma, each identified by the word account. Each identified, that is really cool, by the word, comma, account. That's a super fun fact. Okay, and it does give you the um, places where that's mentioned. So I may just really small write this down. Two, four, two, four, five, one, um, six, nine. Sorry, this is a long video, but I feel like it's important. Six, nine, ten, one, eleven, ten. If you're writing this down with me, 1110, 1127, 2512, 2519, and 361. Wow, that's super cool. Fun fact, fun fact, I love fun facts. There we go. Okay, now what else does this say? It says the main story sketches the period from Adam to Abraham and tells about the ways God of of tells about the ways of God with the human race as a whole. So the introduction to the main story sketches the period from Adam to Abraham. So where could I write that? Um I kind of wish I wouldn't have made a hot mess up here, but I've got Abraham here, Adam to Abraham. So let's just write 
Adam to Abraham. Adam to Abraham. God's people. I'm just going to write God's people. There we go. Okay. Genesis dot, dot, dot. Adam to Abraham, God's people. There's no reason why I did it that way. I just did it that way. Okay. Um, what are the main messages and themes? So let's keep looking. It concentrates, da, 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 numbers with symbolic significance figure prominently in Genesis, the number 10, in addition to being the numbers of section, is also the number of names appearing in the genealogies of chapter 5 and 11. The number 7 occurs frequently. Um, the book of Genesis is basically prose narrative. Eh. Oh, this is cool. This is fun fact. Fun fact. Are you guys ready for this? It is, this is from my NIV study Bible, no coincidence, and if I don't look at how this is spelled, coin, sedence, it is no coincidence that many, this is super cool, you guys are going to love this, that many of the subjects, of the subjects, and themes, Of the first three chapters of Genesis, this is cool, are you guys ready for this? Are reflected, oh, you're gonna love this, are reflected in the last three chapters of Revelation. That is so cool. So one of my, well, my most popular video, I go through and tell you not to start reading the Bible at the beginning. Now, the reason why I say that is because the the Bible, um, when you first become a Christian, you want to learn about Jesus. That's the only reason. Genesis is essential in understanding the rest of the Bible. So once you've read one of the um, stories about Jesus, one of the Gospels, I highly suggest that then you go back to Genesis, okay? And we are going to loop, 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 loop. Bloop, 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 bloop. Okay, there we go. And then what else can we put? Let's see. Um, that goes right into the, let's put that one away. Let's see what else we can find. Okay, um, let's look at the ESV study Bible again. And let's go to Genesis. Genesis, okay? Um, Genesis seems to reflect very well its origin. Moses lived in the 1500s to, or 1300s, okay? So what do we know about Moses? Um, Moses lived in either the 1300s, 1300s, or 1500s B.C. That's a fun fact about Moses, right? Make sure I got you angled in here again. Okay. Um, the flood story finds its best parallels. Da, da, da. No, no, no. That's not helpful. Um, no, that's not helpful. Okay, let's see what this, the genealogies of Genesis. That's cool. That's super cool. Um, the generations of Genesis. Okay. Arrangement of the book. Um... What else? Another important feature of Genesis is this particular interest in genealogies. So the book of Genesis is essential in understanding the rest of the Bible. Main messages and themes. So that's something we didn't write down. It's a book of beginnings. The book of Genesis is essential in understanding the rest of the Bible. Genesis emphasizes genealogies. To understand, this is my own words, the background 
of God's people. And that's gonna drive me nuts that I have this blank white space there because that's just the way Nikki rolls, but I'm gonna leave it. Let's just do this. Okay, what else can we find? I'd love to learn more about the Israelites. Just briefly, the Lord, God graciously, um, Genesis and history, Genesis and science, Literary features. Wow, the ESV Study Bible is very thorough. Let me tell you, you can go to esv.org or their app, and you can click on their free study Bible and learn a lot of this. A lot of this same information is in that. So how can I just really super briefly learn about God's people? Hmm, I'm not really sure. I'm not so, so, so sure. Um, maybe I'll just leave that blank and someday if I learn a few little fun facts that I can um, go into there, then I could do that. Um, definitely God's people, the Israelites. So it says, who was the original audience and what do you know about them? Um, God's people, the Israelites. We know that this was part of the law. So this book was part of their law books they also call it the pentateuch which means five and was essential in their and i'm going to put and therefore our teaching Okay, this book was part of their law books and was essential in their teaching. Okay, so very cool, right? Okay, so I'm done. That was it. That was for Genesis. So I'll try to do another day with you, um, Exodus, here coming up soon. So we can kind of go through this. I want to learn um, as much as I can about the stories of, or I mean the backgrounds of these books. And so this is important to me that I get to do that. Um, let's see, but I wish that I could have written out like more about the flood and the different things, creation. Um, let's see, Genesis is a true story. Gene emphasis, genealogies, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Um, let's draw maybe, let's draw. We're gonna draw, we're gonna draw something. We're gonna draw a boat. Just for fun, we're gonna draw a boat. We're gonna draw the ark, just for fun, because why not? Wow, that is a fancy ark, Nikki. That is a fancy ark. The flood. Now, the only reason why I put that is because I feel like that's a significant story in Genesis, and I wanted to make sure that I said something about it, right? We've got creation, we've got the flood. Okay, so we are good. All right, you're beautiful, God loves you, and I'll see you in the next video. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and you'd like to see more of these videos using my Unfolding Truth workbooks. I'll see you later, bye.